is up my dudes and welcome to sketchbook session number nine and today I have to say I'm feeling unhinged I'm just feeling like barely a person and part of that is because I'm going through an art block that is just weird for me I'm not used to this kind of art block the kind where I can draw things but they just look so today I think I'm going to focus on mainly doing some studies and like just trying to get my brain powers right so that I can draw regular again. So let's get into it and see if I can draw regular. <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna start out simple and just draw a face and just try to start with that. I've gone back to the trusty red pencil because I don't trust myself with the ballpoint pen right now. And also this paper and the ballpoint pen just haven't been playing well. So we're gonna try this and see if I can focus more on structure and just making something that actually looks right instead of doing flashy ballpoint pen things. So I have had like an absolute roller coaster of a month and most of it has been by my own design and like lack of planning skills. I've been like doing the most. It feels like every second of every day for the past month. And right now I'm just like, all right, let's get back to just feeling like a person and doing like regular everyday self care things. Like, you know, eating right, sleeping, bathing, you know, the stuff that human beings do. Because for the last month I've just been trying to like work on projects as well as get all of my assignments done and then I also feel like I've been going to so many events and then I've hosted events and I'm just like, man, I really just want to take a nap right now. <laughs> and like that's the main reason why I'm having art block because I feel like I haven't been able to draw over the last month, honestly. And if you look at my Instagram right now, she's like dead. I have not posted on Instagram in probably over a month at this point. And I do have art that I did over the past month that I need to like get on there and post. But that's the point here. It's like, I have not done art so like I've done it, but I haven't done it. It's been all for like videos and it's been very specific. So it hasn't been like, all right, let's just practice and like try to draw something, right? It's been like, all right, let's do creature design or let's do this very specific whatever. So I feel like this is the first time that I've gotten to sit down and just be like, all right, let's try to get back to basics and just try to actually uh, learn how to draw again. Because I'm a big believer that, at least for myself, whenever I have art blocks, it's mostly because I haven't studied fundamentals for a while and I haven't like really been focusing on the underlying structure and technical aspects of art. I've been focusing too much on like high concept stuff and like stylization and all that stuff is awesome, but I'm uh, sort of of the opinion that your visual library can only last so long and eventually you're gonna run out of what your visual library remembers and you need to go back and like study and I guess remember it again if that makes sense. So that's sort of what I'm trying to do here right now. And this is also kind of brainless, right? Cause like I've been drawing in my sketchbook most days, the last couple of days, but I've been drawing mostly OCs and stylized stuff and it just has not really been it. So I think doing something a little bit more brainless, like just trying to study photographs will be what I need to do to just get out of this funk a little bit. Cause I just feel weird, man. I pick up a pencil and I'm like, Man, wait, how, how do you do this again? I've been spending the last 10 years like doing this almost every day. Why am I forgetting how to do this? But um, that's sort of the current situation. I feel like in the sketchbook sessions I've been doing, everything's been so highly themed and stylized that I haven't had uh, an opportunity to just sketch. Cause like the last two sessions I did, one, I completely botched most of the illustrations, so I hid behind paint markers to make it look regular, and 
in the other one, I just full on was like, all right, we're gonna do an acrylic painting today. And <laughs> it's like, I, uh, I think paint is great for me because it helps me to fix my mistakes a lot, but also it's like, I hide behind paint because paint is like so easy to fix and change if you like mess up a little bit. And sometimes I need to put down the paint and just focus on the underlying structure and like lines and that sort of thing. And that's what I'm trying to do here, sort of. It's still not like perfect coming together, but we're gonna try to just do something and make something that looks good. Um, so like, let's, let's recap on some of the reasons why I feel completely unhinged today. Um, I actually, I've been like pretty productive today because uh, I actually rested this weekend and kind of like slept and stuff. Oh, and this is our pen for today. Uh, I am using a pen. I'm just using this random pen that I stole from my brother. So, yes. Um, so I, I went like most of October just going like an absolute mad woman. And then I got to the end of October and I was like, wow, man, I'm super burned out. And I also hasn't like slept normally for a while. So I should probably do that. But then I was also like, oh wait, I have like a trip planned for the first weekend of November, which was this past weekend. And I was supposed to go like out of state with some friends to a 21 Pilots concert. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I can sleep when I'm dead. Let's just go to this thing and have a good time. And I was super pumped for it, super excited. Like I've had these tickets for maybe not quite like seven months, but it feels like I've had them for like seven months or something like that. Like I have been planning this for ages. And then last minute, my plans totally and completely fell through and I could not go and I lost like three hundred dollars because i couldn't use the tickets and i couldn't i didn't get them sold in time it's just been a mess um but the flip side of that is that since i didn't go out of town i just stayed home doing nothing i actually was able to catch up on like sleep um and like some self-care things so i don't know maybe it was just the universe being like hey maybe you need to like sleep for a minute uh but yeah that sucked quite a bit but at least I am somewhat well rested now but at the same time it feels like waking up from a coma I'm not dramatic I'm not dramatic at all it's not at all that it's just like I finally rested and slept and now I'm like all right trying to like get back into a normal rhythm instead of working on a project like every day from uh, I don't know, 8 a.m. to midnight and often later, which is what I've been doing. And mind you, the project still isn't even done because it's a, it's it was for a video. And I keep being really picky about how I want to like edit the video and put it together. And so it's like, it's, it's still not done. It was supposed to be out at the end of October. And now I'm like, all right, you know, we're probably going to release it more at the beginning of December, it's gonna be like a month late, but it's fine. I'm just trying to like put it together and have it be something that I'm actually proud of because I have spent so much time on it and I hope that it is good and worth the wait. It's also like niche content, so probably no one's gonna watch it. This is like just for me at this point because I just felt like it. Um, so yeah, I, I uh, neglected sleep and self-care for a month for something that's just like a whim right? Because that's a very me thing to do. But anyways, um, I'm finally catching up from all of that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I've worked on all of the skills that I needed to do to like finish that project and work on that video. And I've been doing like research about like actual like camera stuff and like how to use my camera and like all of these things that relate more to video production and like filmmaking rather than like art or even crafting. So it's like that's been in the mix and I feel like my brain is finally like, okay, we've been cramming so much other information in that we forgot how to draw and now it's like time to draw again. Um, so that's what I'm doing here today. And I even feel like 
the entire explanation I just gave probably sounded pretty unhinged. So, um, my gosh, I feel like half the people who watch these are just like, yeah, I just watch these to fall asleep or unwind. And I realize that my current mood might not be the most relaxing for you. So I I'm very sorry about that. I'm going to try to like calm down uh, the unhinged vibes a little bit here, but uh, that's that's the mood that I'm in right now today and uh, Yeah, we'll we'll figure out how to draw again eventually, but I'm just gonna try to work on I Don't know trying I, I Don't know you guys. I really can't wait for the semester to be over I've like really enjoyed the semester. We've done a lot of interesting projects. I feel like I've learned a lot, but I'm also like so tired and I'm like, can I just turn my brain off for a solid month and just veg in front of the TV and watch The Expanse? That's like all I want to do. That's what my brother and I do whenever it's like Christmas time because The Expanse on Amazon Prime, great show, look it up, comes up, comes out in December. So like the new season is out and I can just sit in my recliner like a 40 year old dad and eat my flaming hot cheeto cheetos i can speak i promise um and just do nothing it's like really all i want to do right now um comment below if you too are feeling the effects of a long semester and just being unhinged and you just want to turn your brain off and do nothing for a month uh who else wants to do that because i certainly do uh yeah uh, speaking of turning your brain off, since I didn't go on a trip this weekend, I was able to turn my brain off a little bit, and that felt so good. Oh my gosh, how do you draw noses? Um, but yeah, I turned my brain off, and I did, like, exercise is also something that I've been neglecting over the past month. Like, I've tried to do it as much as possible, because, especially for running, um, I'm a runner, I like to run, oh my gosh. Uh, like October is really good weather for running where I live because it gets like cool in the evenings but not freezing and I like to night run because it's like the one thing that just allows me to turn my brain off and not think any thoughts because you're running into just darkness. Um, I'm a weirdo because I normally don't even have like a flashlight when I run. Like I have one but I don't turn it on. I just like to run into the void. It's amazing. It's peaceful. So I was able to run a little bit in October, but other than that, it's it was like not as much exercising as I wanted to do, which is like not great because exercise is one of the things that makes me feel like sane, right? Um, but this weekend I did like a pretty thorough workout cardio session, which was just like really nice and I needed it. It just helps me to actually decompress and just stop freaking out every five seconds because I have a million things to do and I'm like barely awake <laughs> so I did that that was amazing and I cleaned up from like Halloween and from projects like cleaning can be somewhat therapeutic I've found whenever you just your brain can't do anything else because you're exhausted and you just can't think anymore but cleaning is like the one thing that you can do that's like all right this is productive but I, it doesn't require like too much brain power right well the sketch i don't know how i feel about it we'll, we'll we'll see we'll figure it out um yeah so i'm so sorry this session is already just a mess that's every session though like I'm, I I've genuinely apologize to all the people who are watching this being like, oh, I just want to relax and unwind and I'm just going a million miles an hour. I'll, maybe I can like calm down a little bit and uh, maybe restore some of the calm vibes to this. I don't know. Who knows? Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, cleaning. So yeah, I cleaned and I organized some of my Halloween decorations because I put some stuff away and I watched Julian Solomita stream some game while I did that. That was rad. Um, and then after that, like I did a bunch of school assignments this weekend too because I was like, all right, I'm tired, but this is kind of brainless. So let's do it and get ahead. So we did that and then I finally was like, 
okay, I'm gonna have some evenings that are like, just do whatever I want, right? I'm just gonna chill and I'm gonna eat some food that's terrible for me. I'm gonna do whatever. So this weekend we had like a slasher genre marathon and I watched uh, Scream 1 and 2, which were beautiful, love them. Watch them for the first time because I'm late to everything, right? So I watched both of those and then I watched uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street and great films, 10 out of 10, loved them. I feel so late to the slasher genre. Wes Craven is going to come and haunt me in my nightmares now because I ignored his films for 23 years of my life. I'm sorry, Wes. I know you're dead already, but I mean, so was Freddy. What? Um, I have to say, spoiler alert for A Nightmare on Elm Street if you haven't seen it, but is this even a spoiler? Like, probably not. I was so sad when Johnny Depp died. Because young Johnny Depp is like, let's all, we know, we know he was, he was a cute boy. And I was like, you, you just killed the cute, dumb boy. And I hate it whenever they do that. Um, I really liked the protagonist of A Nightmare on Elm Street, though. She was like, really honestly brave. She was just like, yeah, I'm going to go back in to the dream with the dream demon. I'll just like catch him, right? Even though I'll probably die. I was like... Nancy, what are you doing? I could never. Nancy was way braver than me. I'm just here like, okay, dream demon. I'm all set with the, the dream demon stuff. I don't want it. I don't want to see it. I'm, I'm good. I'll just drink a lot of coffee and I'll take five hour energy until I am hospitalized. And Nancy said, no, I'm going to go back asleep and I'm going to fight this dream demon. And then the end, it's just like, oh wait, they're all like probably dead and stuck in the dream with the dream demon. What did I tell you was gonna happen, Nancy? Gosh, the whole time is just like, what are you doing? Don't do that. Oh my gosh, like, uh, just drink more coffee. Just don't go back asleep. Oh my gosh, she's going asleep again. I was also so irritated at her garbage dad. Like her mom just straight up died in front of them and got sucked into dream demon world and she's just like dad do you believe me now and he's just like sure honey and you're like wait what how is he not petrified he was just like you know it happens and it's like your mom burned freddy krueger in alive in a house and then she just got revenged like what's huh and oh my gosh i had to come apart because the dad was just so stupid. Why are cops so stupid in these films? They're always like, oh yeah, it'll be fine. We'll just arrest him. And it's like, you really think you're going to go and arrest a dream demon? I love how like they keep stumbling upon these gruesome murder scenes where it's just like more blood than is humanly possible to fit in the bodies of these 80 pound teens. And they're like, huh, the coroner is really confused about this. And you're like, yeah, you don't think some funny business is going on here? Like, do, do you not notice the gigantic hole in Johnny Depp's bed? I, I just, oh my gosh, I had a moment, you guys. Um, just, the parents in these films are always so stupid. It gets me. Um, but yeah, here's our first sketch. Uh, she's like, she looks okay. She doesn't look much like this. Ooh, camera angles. Um, but she's something. Let's move on to the next one. Not me saying that I'm not going to hide behind color and then literally just hiding behind color. I'm not doing that. You're doing that. Don't talk. Okay, I don't even know why this pose, but it's probably gonna fit here. So that is mostly why this pose. All right, so you've heard my A Nightmare on Elm Street rant. Now we're going to get started on the Scream 1 and 2 rant. I haven't seen the other ones yet, but I'm working on it. I just don't want to like spend $20 renting them from YouTube all at once because that's how I've been watching them. <laughs> I've just had to rent them from YouTube because they're not on anything. Okay, Scream 1 and 2. I'm a big fan so far, honestly. I don't know why I like the slasher genre because I'm like not as big on other genres of horror. I mean, I like sci-fi horror a good bit because like, I mean, who doesn't? Um, and I like some supernatural horror things but like 
In terms of horror, I'm not into everything. It's just like, for some reason, I have been drawn to the slasher genre. And like, as I've been watching these, because I also like the Halloween movies and like a bunch of other slashery things that I've seen. I haven't seen like many, so I'm kind of like catching up because as a child, like I wasn't allowed to watch them. So I'm just now discovering them and that I like them. Oh, this pose is already wretched. But yeah, like the reason that I think I like them so much is the pacing and the suspense is like exquisite. Like everything keeps you kind of on the edge of your seat and you're in that place where you're like kind of scared for longer than you would be if it was like, oh, jump scare or whatever, which I don't typically consider jump scares to be true horror anyways, because it's like a physical response to being startled. It, it like doesn't count. There is no horror crafting going on in a jump scare. It's like cheap. Sorry, I was talking about Scream and then I needed my eraser, so I, I had to go get that because this, this is not looking how I planned it to look anyways. All right, so I was saying, um, I think I like the slasher genre because they kind of keep the suspense going like throughout the film. It's like inherently sort of an, a one long chase scene almost combined with also like a murder mystery. I don't know. It just gets my inner like Scooby-Doo loving kid. It hits it in a very particular place. And I just think that they're fun to watch. They're fun to like sit and figure out, all right, who's the killer or what's the killer gonna do next? Like who's the target, whatever. And you get to rely on all of these tropes to help you figure it out too. You like, or at least I spent half the movie trying to figure out which tropes they're going to continue with and which ones they're going to try to like subvert. I don't know. I just think it's a fun experience to watch and um, I have a good time. It's just chill and I don't know, I don't get like overly attached to any of the characters, so if someone dies, I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, this is a slasher film. Um, another reason why I like them, there's always like a female protagonist. I don't know why that is, I guess because women are like vulnerable or whatever, but like the female protagonists tend to be like really fun to watch and they tend to like outsmart the slasher in fun ways and they normally survive the film too. Um, you know, so that we can have eight sequels that aren't good. <laughs> but I feel like that's why I like them. They just, like, I watch them and I just like, oh my gosh, what a girl boss running away from this slasher. Um, and I'm like, okay, these, these ladies are also quite brave. Because half the time they're like, alright, let's lure the killer in and try to like catch them. And I'm like, why are you doing that? I would be running to the next state over if someone was after me like that. They always just stay in their own hometown. And half the time they're not even under police protection. And you're like, what is going on? I would be like hiding in police custody if I had, I don't know, Mike Myers or Ghostface after me, right? But they're always like, all right, let's just catch him and be a girl boss. And I'm like, okay, I see you. I don't know. It's just fun. I just like it for many reasons. And also, I'm a, like a f film effects nerd. I love figuring out how they do certain effects in film. So like, especially something like nightmare on elm street or some of the more creative kills in scream it's fun to figure out how they're doing all the effects and how they're even making it look like it looks i don't know i just think stuff like that is really interesting and uh yeah like it just kind of gets my inner film nerd and hits it in a very particular area so um but let's do the scream rant i have a lot of thoughts on Scream. Uh, so first one, overall good film, good movie. I mean, um, what if I came on youtube.com and I was like, you know, Scream is a bad movie. Imagine the collapse that would happen. Um, Cause that also just simply isn't true, but that would be kind of funny. Like, I don't know. I, it, of, of course I like this film. It's universally, known to be like a good film for the most part um but i really like the beginning sequence where uh drew barrymore's character is killed again like if 
I don't know how this turned into me just talking about the slasher movies that I watched this weekend, but apparently that's what this video is now. So if you don't like that, I'm really sorry, but also if you don't like want spoilers or anything, I'm just gonna be spoiling the entire plot of Scream 1 and 2, and I just spoiled a lot of Nightmare on Elm Street. So, I mean, you know me, I'm a spooky kid. You, you knew what you signed up for when you clicked this video, if you've been on this channel for any amount of time. So, you know, I, is that what I'm gonna have to call this video now? Just like ranting about slasher films? Is that what this is turning into? <laughs> I, originally, whenever I started filming this video, I was like, alright, what am I going to talk about today? What What's in my cards? So I was like, alright, well we can talk about, like, you know, art block and how I'm going to try to work on improving my art and getting back into the swing of things and all this stuff that's, like, actually art related. And then I sit down to film and I'm like, no, 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 no. We're just going to talk about Wes Craven for two hours. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, so... Anyways, I like I was saying, I like the beginning sequence of Scream where Drew Barrymore gets killed because first of all, like the suspense of it all, I, I really like how she's like in the house and she's getting these calls in, I guess in the tropes of these films, whenever you have someone who's like the protagonist and they're a girl and you're like, all right, this person's probably going to make it out alive. It's almost like that fake out protagonist thing. Because it's also like Drew Barrymore and she was like the famous person in that film, right? So you think she's going to be the protagonist. And you think that she's going to make it out of there alive. But no, Ghostface just straight up like mutilates her and it's wild. And you're just like, oh my gosh, who's the protagonist then? And then you meet the protagonist. And you're like, oh, okay, this is the girl. And obviously she's the protagonist because she's like a virgin and crap. <laughs> and you're like, ah, I get it now. But um, from then on, I'm just spending the entire time being like, all right, who did it? Who's the killer? What's going on? Because I didn't have many spoilers about that movie going in. I didn't really know who the killer was going to be. I like vaguely kind of knew what was going on, but I also really didn't. Like, I didn't know that there were going to be for sure like two killers in the end. I for sure thought it was going to be someone in that little friend group. Because like, let's be honest, um the protagonist's boyfriend and then the other girl's boyfriend they are just they were so sketchy the whole time i was just like why are you even dating these guys they're like total sleaze bags and they're just like freaky and weird and one of them is just royalty free johnny depp and you're just like wow man like that you, you couldn't even be real johnny depp like of course not he don't he died in a nightmare on elm street he can't be real johnny depp anyways um and then, like, I totally was like, it's probably, it, it's one of those friends I totally thought was going to be, like, the crazy friend from the beginning. Like, her friend's boyfriend. Because he just gave me immediate serial killer vibes. I thought it was probably going to be him. And then, um, like, the, 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 what, what was his name? Randy? Randy. I thought it was going to be those two. Because they just freaked me out from the beginning. I'm just like, alright, these guys are total, like, weirdos, losers, freaky dudes. It's gonna be these two, because the boyfriend was, like, a little bit too obvious. But then it was like, oh, it's the boyfriend, too, even though the entire film, they were hinting towards, like, oh, yeah, it's the boyfriend, he's the guy, he's the fake out. Like, it's clever that they're like, oh, it's both the boyfriend and the other guy, but at the same time, I'm like, man, the boyfriend was just so obvious. Why would you have to make it him? But of course it was, and it, it was like kind of who you would expect, but at the same time, I was like, it can't be them, because that's too obvious, and I don't know. Good duo, because they're like both so insane, like the end, where they were like cutting each other so that they could look like they were attacked too, and they were like the only survivors. I was just like, man, these dudes are freaking insane. They really nailed down that like, classic serial killer insanity that you know we've grown accustomed to seeing in such films um but i feel like they were solid villains in the end because uh you just never knew what they were going to do like it, he was like oh you know it's always scarier whenever a serial killer doesn't have a motive uh like that trope which i mean true but also 
like you you are a cliche still like you're kind of clever dog but you're also a cliche so i don't know how i feel about discount johnny depp being you know the mastermind of the situation because it just kind of felt obvious but at least they gave the justification of like okay well you know the reason he did it was because the girl's mom ran away with his dad or I, who someone left someone i don't even remember what happened but um overall pretty good film i liked the protagonist of that one too although she f felt like a little gullible but i also i don't know she seemed like a chill cool girl um i still liked nancy better though like in a nightmare on elm street i just thought she was a little bit more of an active protagonist in some ways um but i i guess if your your mom got murdered like the summer before and you're just trying to get over that you don't necessarily want to be going headfirst into another murder thing uh so i like i get it but i know i'm like droning on and on about this i'm ranting but i just have to get it out of my system uh, so let's talk about scream 2 specifically the beginning and the beginning of this film frustrated me to no end because they released they released no 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 they um like introduced these characters to us in like the theater scene and the guy he's i'll be honest he's like kind of annoying he was like being really really obnoxious if that was my boyfriend i'd be like all right you know what i'm going home um but the girl she was like really cool she had like a fun sassy attitude toward to her she was just like why are we here watching this film about kids being murdered you're crazy but i'm gonna stay here at least and like let you have your fun i don't know she was just fun she was a cool character i feel like we got to see some like fun personality from her and she would have been like an interesting character to have as one of the leads in the film because i was like okay we've already been introduced to this character and got to see some of her personality and everything and like she was she was cool right and then they kill her and i was like dang it like i knew it was coming the whole time i was just like please don't die please don't die because like the whole stab premiere which is hilarious like as a name like the whole scream franchise is just like making fun of itself at this point um that was like a madhouse like imagine these days having theaters be like that like absolutely not <laughs> uh that i would never be in a theater that was that crazy because i would be like okay this is just too crazy people are too hyped to see this slasher film someone's gonna straight up get murdered and then what happened? Someone straight up got murdered and people were like, this is normal. This is fine. This is part of the premiere, right? No, someone just got murdered. Anyways, um, I, the point of this is I'm really sad she died. And I feel like the cast would have been stronger if they had her as like a character who maybe like survived or I don't know, something, something like that. Um, and the rest of the film, the characters were just kind of eh. Like, I feel like the um, the girl's other friend, I feel like didn't get much screen time. It just felt very much so like you had Gail and What's-Her-Face, the main character, and then you had this male-dominated cast where the, the characters weren't even that good because even Randy died early and Dewey is just kind of like, meh, he's okay. So, I don't know. I feel like there was a lack of personality happening there. And that's just my personal rant, but it had to be said. And I'm sad that that character died, like, right away. Um, so we have this sketch now, which I think is okay, but the head proportions are also majorly bothering me. But uh, we're gonna keep going now. Everyone's going to be laughing at me because this random piece of paper showed up like eh, I was working on a sketch and I didn't like it so I'm gonna start over but that's sometimes how it is when you draw with a ballpoint pen um, I'm gonna try to do this kind of quickly because again I'm trying to focus on like figure drawing type thing like not really but just trying to get like poses and anatomy like a little bit more solid and I also didn't like the location of this pose on the page whenever I was doing it because it cut off the feet. 
So I'm trying to like get the bend of this and have it be a little bit more accurate. But while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk a little bit about my process for breaking down a pose like this. So whenever I'm doing something like this, I'm normally going to like uh, draw with more angular shapes and like boxes almost so that I can like kind of figure out the angles of everything and uh, the perspective. Like I think perspective is pretty important with a pose like this from this angle can be kind of difficult to figure out what perspective things should be at if you're using like really curved shapes to sketch things out. So again, I tend to go with boxier shapes and more angular shapes. And then uh, as I refine things, I'll add more curve and everything. But to me, it's just easier to start with something that's like pretty angular just so that I can kind of figure out what is the favored edge of the pose as uh, Ethan Becker would say. Um, but I find that doing this is pretty helpful and uh, you know this is probably not going to be my best work again because I'm very rusty especially whenever it comes to breaking down a pose like this. I haven't done more like figure drawing, like more realistic poses in a while just because stuff I have drawn has been stylized and for character design and whatnot. So it's definitely not going to be anywhere close to perfect, but the sketching method, like I'm using like some curves here and there, but then mostly just angles. And kind of trying to figure out, see like, instead of making a curve at the peak of this calf, I did more of an angle shape here. So I can figure out kind of where everything is in relation to each other. And draw on this butt, I have more of an angle there. And then, um, if you haven't done this method before, try it out. Cause like ever since I started doing it, I see like a lot of very skilled, like anatomical artists sketch like this. And it always tends to work out really well for them and their stuff. So I started doing it and like, I feel like it's definitely helped me to improve like more observational drawings. Um, Cause observational drawing is definitely not my strong suit. I would say most of the time I find it easier almost to draw without reference just because it allows me to finagle things to kind of look right rather than trying to stick to a solid reference. Um, see like already you can see some of the differences between my shape and their shape like there should be more angles between those. So that's something else I'm trying to kind of work on is like Sketching using the negative space of like a form can also be like very helpful for capturing like the motion of something. So like this space here would be considered like negative space or whatever. Um, with a sketch like this, even though it kind of looks a little weird at first, I can just shade this in because she's wearing like, you know, clothing here that's dark. And even though it didn't look quite right at first, since this is here, I'll just shade that in and sort of like correct the angle of that leg like a little bit at least. And then I do that for like the top part here too. So, um, But that's sort of how I normally go about sketching something like this. And I'm definitely not the best at doing sketches like this that are in perspective. Because there's like a decent amount of perspective here. And I'm better at stuff like this than I used to be. Like, for sure. But I, I still struggle. Because I'm used to drawing, I would say, pretty basic angles of characters. 
um, pretty straight on stuff. I'm trying to get better at getting out of my comfort zone and not just drawing that stuff, but you know, for the time being, since I'm not that great whenever I do, it, it turns out like a little rough, but you know, that's part of the learning process. Yeah, she can have a ball out here. Um, I would say that this looks like okay compared to my reference. I also, like this, this page is really random. Part of me is like, what am I even gonna call this session? Cause I feel like this page is just super random in terms of theme. I'm just kind of drawing whatever, but I feel like pages like this can also turn out looking really interesting just because there's so many interesting poses and shapes and there's a lot going on here. So maybe it'll turn out looking good in the end once I kind of add some themes and colors. Um, I feel like a lot of times whenever I do pages like this in my sketchbook, it's either um, all figure drawings or all just pretty girls, which it kind of gives it more of a theme. But this is a bit of a mix compared to what I normally do. Also, this butt is like a lot. It's not quite, you know, it's not quite reference accurate. Because I, I, I went a little bit overboard, but that's okay. Um, there you go. And I also, like, this is totally random and off topic for figure drawing, but um, I highly recommend this hatch pattern that I'm using, like, here. Uh, I got it from, like, Lavender Town, I think, because she uses it whenever she's, like, working on comics and stuff and just sketches. I just think it's really visually pleasing, but. Uh, and I, I take a messier approach to it, but I, I do like a scribbles like one direction and then I rotate and it kind of hatches together a pretty pleasing looking pattern. Um, it, it feels like organized chaos to me and I really like how it looks in my sketchbook and everything. And I kind of like having a sort of clean, sort of gritty sketching style. So it works really well for that. So if you're also a fan of that kind of like gritty but clean look where you have like a nice view of the under sketch, even though you've refined a good bit on top, I highly recommend this little hatch pattern. Sometimes I'll go back on top and I'll add even more scribbles. I don't know. It's just kind of fun. I like it. It makes my pages look a little bit more interesting. That's sort of what I'm all about, as many of you I'm sure know. I just like making my sketch pages look interesting. And then this is not accurate to the sketch, or to the reference at all. But I'm adding some wild hair. I'm using this same hatch pattern on this hair. Yes. I hope that I can fit like a good many sketches. What What is the words that I'm using right now? I hope I can fit a nice amount of sketches on this page in a decent time. Cause I feel like the last sketchbook session I uploaded was like two hours long. And I'm sure the people who did watch it were like, oh, this is nice, this is fine. Um, but also it's like two hour sketchbook session maybe getting a little bit excessive. So I'm gonna try to actually make this a reasonable length. I say that every single time, but um, you know, I actually am gonna try to meet it for once. <laughs> uh, what do volleyballs look like? They look, this is wrong. I'm gonna wait and <laughs> I'll add the volleyball detail in like a second here. Let's add some shoe detail. I really like drawing shoes. I'm not like amazing at it, but I don't know, it's just fun. I went through this intense phase where I was like, I refuse to draw a shoe. Shoes are the worst. They're so hard. I, I'm going to avoid doing it at all costs. 
and that goes for feet too like feet are just hard to draw man i don't know what it is but now i'm in this place where i still for sure hate drawing feet like just feet it's just weird to draw like if you like drawing feet you do you man but i don't get it um but i do like drawing shoes like some shoes i've gotten a better idea of like the angles and the shapes that go into a shoe and now it's just kind of fun to figure out how to do it so that's that's another like nice little thing you can do to trick yourself into drawing something that you don't normally like to draw um Find like a, an art style of someone who's really good at drawing that thing and then look at it all the time, get obsessed with it, and then be like, okay, I have to learn how to do this now because I just really want to learn how to make shoes that are that pretty or whatever. And it'll, it'll motivate you to draw some shoes like that's what I did. All right, this sketch is pretty nice actually. So let's see what else I can do. There's like uh, this little rough breakdown of a sketch of a girl that I think is really cute. So I think I'm gonna squeeze that in like right here somehow if I can do that. Um, it, might, it might be kind of small, but I see stuff like this on Pinterest all the time. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Someone went in and actually showed like the underlying structure to a sketch that's very satisfying. And I'm always like, man, I want to go in and like draw one of those one day. And I always forget that they exist. And I'll probably see if I can change this up a little bit just so it's not like the exact same. But I also like the stylization of this sketch. It's like very pleasing. And I'm still kind of in a place where I'm trying to work on learning how to make my female characters look more stylized and appealing in a way that I like. Um, Cause uh, I, I, there's so many ways to stylize characters and like proportions, I feel like play into that a ton. Just stylizing the proportions of a character and the proportions of your art style in general can make things look so different and so interesting and like, I really want to get more into that and learn about it just so that like I can kind of make my art style more unique and uh, have more fun with it. But it's definitely a process and uh, whenever I'm like barely getting my basic anatomy down, it can definitely feel intimidating. <laughs> But eventually we'll get there. I think I'm gonna talk about this soon in another video. I don't know when I'm gonna get to this. Oh, the proportions, what are they? Oh no. This is the stage where I need to kind of start making a sketch my own because I'm not I'm not getting it to look like the original. Um like I was saying, I think I'm gonna talk about this in an actual video soon because I've been getting so many um, like video requests for um, doing a video about how to draw different body types and I've been meaning to do a video on body types like basically since I started back at my channel like a year ago or whatever I actually started making one and then it kind of got a little bit too ambitious and I was like okay I'm gonna have to wait a little bit on this video until I can like properly draw everything and make it the way I want to make it and I feel like there's a lot of videos like that where I, I really want to work on it I really want to make it but I just don't have the necessary time to make it what I want to I'm really gonna have to figure out how to strike a balance between actually making the content and making it how I want it to be <laughs> based on my very very uh, picky video editing and like all my standards are just kind of ridiculous for someone like me who just doesn't have that much time week to week and uh, whenever I don't upload at least a couple weeks in a row per month YouTube gets super mad at me so I have to figure out a way to actually upload more often that's beside the point anyways so uh, in 
the body types video, whenever I do it, I'm gonna focus a lot on how proportions affect how the body looks. And because uh, I feel like people don't think about it much, but body types are a lot more complicated than the standard fitness garbage you hear where it's like, you have a pear shape, you're an apple. Like, I don't know if anyone else feels this way about that, but I really hate that because it really just simplifies things too much and boils things down. And it almost feels insulting. Like, because I feel like everyone's body type is a lot more unique than you're an hourglass, you're an apple, you're a pear. Like, okay, that's not how your body actually looks. Like, oh, please. There's so many other things going into, like, the, the composition of someone's body. And I feel like whenever I make the video, I really want to touch on, okay, these are the literal scientific anatomical things that affect how someone's body looks. And everyone's body looks a little bit different because of uh, proportions of bone structure and genetics. There's like so much that goes into it that I feel like people just totally brush over. So I want to actually look at it from that standpoint and kind of be like, all right, these are the things that you can do to like basically design a body for an illustration or a character or whatever. Cause um, like whenever you're an artist, the body that you look at the most is normally going to be your own. And like whenever I've observed my body and how my proportions look, it's so specific. It is so different than <laughs> like how female bodies are portrayed in like media and all kinds of stuff. And I think it's very interesting how unique proportions can look from person to person. And I think it's like underutilized in character design and everything. Cause people are always like, this is how bodies look and bodies can't look any other way. And it's like, okay, that might be one visually appealing way for body to look. But then there's also like a bunch of different ways someone's body can look based on genetics and all kinds of other factors. And I don't know, I just kind of want to talk about it because again, I feel like it is underutilized and just not discussed a whole lot. And I don't know. Um, I'm going to make a video about it one of these days, maybe in December or something like that. But I do have quite a few videos that I want to make that are more like educational because I feel like that's the kind of stuff that people have been requesting the most recently. So I'm trying to balance all the stuff that I want to make that's like, oh, I want to make this prop, I want to make this thing with like everyone's requests for educational stuff and just trying to get my personal two cents worth on, you know, how I do this or how I do that, whatever. Anyways. Um, proportions in art can make your art style and everything look so drastically different and it's very cool so um, it's also like a big thing for I feel like I'm droning on for a little bit here um, it's also super important for creature design that's whenever I was working on my like uh, video that I did for Halloween which was designing like cryptids and everything uh, go watch it if you haven't. It was a fun video to work on. Uh, I looked into a lot of like creature design whenever I was designing like the one that looked more like a Wendigo and distorting the proportions of normally like human looking anatomy for a monster and like skewing things and making things look, look a little bit off is a huge like point in creature design and making something look kind of spooky. So that was also fun because I got to like play with the silhouette of some of the creatures and kind of try to make them look spooky and scary. And what I did was by no means groundbreaking or super impressive, but it was fun to at least get some practice doing that when I have such limited experience with that so far. Like I've never really done much of that. So in the future, I would really love to um, maybe work on more of those videos and go way further than I did with the concepts and the creature designs because 
Uh, I just love character design in general. I think it's really cool. I think it's really fun. And creature design is like this whole untapped world that I haven't really dipped my feet into yet a whole lot. And it, it has like so much more room for creativity than some normal like humanoid character design does. So expect more on that. My channel is just, oh, it's, it's all over the place, but it's fun. Let's do another sketch. Okay, as usual, we are drawing just so many girls and absolutely no men. So I found this picture on Pinterest earlier today and I just thought it looked so cool. I love the composition of it and everything. So I'm gonna try to draw that right here. Um, I need to sharpen my pencil. All right, this is going to be a little tricky because as many of you know, men are not my strong suit whenever it comes to drawing. So I'm gonna do my best. And I'm once again gonna just use so many squares, probably. Because already having to get the head in this perspective is gonna be a little tricky. Just anything downward like this is like kind of immediately a struggle. And we have a Dorito happening like already, but I do like this, this pose takes up a nice portion of my page. Let's see. Because then I don't have to like draw a bunch of stuff over here. I can just draw a bunch of stuff in here, you know? Hopefully I don't get off center with my camera. There. Um, I feel like I didn't do this far up enough. I have to like leave enough room for his hair though. So let's see if we can move this up. It's difficult to break down stuff like this whenever you also have a subject that has more complicated facial geometry, if, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I just feel like whenever I'm drawing characters, like adult men, I feel like have a lot of facial geometry going on compared to some of the like teenage girls that I normally draw because their faces tend to be quite like, simple and they have like not a lot of definition going on. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? So whenever I'm drawing someone like this where it's like you got these angles and you got like just a lot more going on feature wise and it's like accentuated because of the lighting too. It's it can be kind of a struggle, you know, but I I know figure drawing experts are probably cringing in the comments. It's fine. It's all good. I know I mentioned like a couple of uh, things that I wanted to do for videos, but uh, sketchbook sessions are also another great place to leave video suggestions for me uh, in the comments. So let me know uh, what else you want to see from me, especially whenever it comes to educational content or more artsy related content. I mean, you can even request some like prop builds and stuff like that, but like, that's something that I'm trying to still establish, figure out how I want to do it and like how often I want to do it. And if there is even interest on my channel for that, like we'll figure it out. Cause so far it's like, eh, people are vaguely interested, but they're still primarily interested in just strictly art things. So, um, I have like some character design challenge type things on the docket for this month and probably next month too though. But I think I'm gonna take some actual time off for the holidays because like I'm going a little crazy these days if you haven't noticed. I need to like take some time off so I don't completely burn out. I've already partially burned out but um, I'm gonna make it until December most likely. But anyways, uh, I'm... I miss just drawing like digitally and second of all I miss drawing pretty girls so <laughs> I think I'm gonna start a video series where I just do character design for pretty girls and make some like character designs that are in that style of like almost a polished illustration but a character design just because it's so self-indulgent and it's so just I just feel like doing this so I'm going to do it but I also feel like that's low-key what half of you subscribe to me for in the first place. 
So I don't think anyone's going to be complaining if there's a lot of that kind of content on the docket, but I'm planning on doing that. I want to make some tutorials. Um, I want to see if I can figure out like a rhythm for my videos that will work for stuff that's more experimental and for stuff that's more like routine. And then like in the future, I'd also like, really love to do some collaborations and work with other artists. Um, I also just like don't know other artists. So it, I guess if you're a channel, if you're watching this and you're a channel that makes content similar to mine and you'd have any interest in doing a collaboration or just working together on something, uh, like DM me on Instagram or comment down below or something like that because I definitely want to get into like working with other artists because I feel very alone and isolated in what I'm doing here. Because I have like friends who are super artistic and super interested in stuff like this, but like they, they have lives. I'm over here. I'm the one who doesn't have a life who's on the YouTube. So I'm kidding. I do have a life, but, um, you see what I mean? People can't just like drop what they're doing and be like, all right, let's go work on a video for a week. Um, it's just very hard to organize. And I just, I want to get in more with like an art community and everything online too, just because I want to meet other like-minded individuals. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, comment below or something if you would like to maybe collab one day and like, honestly, probably contact me on Instagram. That would probably be a better place to do that because comments are kind of hard to contact people through, you know what I mean? Um, also the other thing that I've been really wanting to do for a long time is start a channel discord. Um, I just, the, the biggest reason recently why I haven't done that, ooh, I got the nose. Do you ever draw a nose and you're like, there it is, that's the nose. Sorry, um, one of the main reasons why I haven't done it recently is my phone is like garbage. And until I get a new phone, I don't feel confident in being able to like keep up with a Discord, especially whenever I'm out. But by December, cause I'm gonna get a new phone like over Black Friday, I've just been trying to hold out until the sales are up so that I can actually like afford to get one that's kind of decent. Um, but after that, I'm going to try to uh, probably start a channel Discord. I'm gonna try to make it free um, so anyone can join. I'm gonna try to be able to like keep up with it and we can like get on there and critique each other's art and like just kind of have that whole community mentality. Um, I've always wanted that just to have more of a community than anything else because I feel like uh, it, it would be very beneficial to all of us because I get a lot of comments of people who are like, man, it's so hard to meet other people who do art and are interested in art. And I'm like, well, I get like probably hundreds of comments like that. Why don't we be friends with each other on a discord? <laughs> and then we can just be art friends with each other, right? Um, so that's that'll be in the works. But I also kind of want to start a uh, Patreon as well, mostly to fund projects for like prop building. Because that's probably going to be the biggest obstacle that I have that would prevent me from doing a lot of prop building videos. They're more time consuming than a normal video, first of all. And you also have to purchase materials for them, especially if you get into building like certain specific kinds of things. Materials can just get kind of expensive. So as I develop that side of my content, if there's interest in that, I would like to have a uh, Patreon just for anyone who would want to support that. Um, or want to support my art otherwise too, like I would probably use it to just, you know, get new equipment and upgrade things and just whatever business related expenses I need, uh, you know, cash flow for, I can use some of that Patreon funds, but I've been wanting to do that for a long time because I feel like whenever you're more experimental and you're kind of all over the place, um, your videos don't always do that great in the algorithm, but I feel like people can kind of get around that and still make a decent income through a Patreon, because I still see a lot of people who 
maybe don't have the best views and the most subscribers, but the people who do watch their stuff um, get a lot out of it. So I don't know. I don't know if that's you. If you would be interested in supporting uh, me on a Patreon eventually. Uh, let me know, maybe, so I can start to workshop like what I would want to do with that. Um, and maybe get some numbers. I would probably make the tiers be pretty inexpensive. Like, for sure, like, the first tier would be, like, one U.S. dollar. Um, and I'd, like, the other thing that's been holding me back from even starting a Patreon is because I would want to have some decent rewards. Like, none of my normal content will ever be behind a paywall. Um, only extra stuff. And it's, like, I want it to be... If you want to, if you have the means, here's some extra stuff so that it's worth your while to go and pledge and support me more. But I have some pretty cool ideas for rewards, and maybe you guys can give me some feedback on this now, too. Um, it's going to take me a while to get this stuff together, but I really want to have like a monthly print or like sticker sheet that I can send to people eventually that can be maybe an early release for my store, or even a Patreon exclusive. Um, and then the other big thing that I would want to do is like, of course, shout outs like at the end of a video. That's like the really standard Patreon stuff. Um, voting on video topics. Um, but one of the biggest things that I want to be a reward that I've been planning on doing for a really long time, I think would just be interesting is to have high uh, definition, like, good quality scans of my complete sketchbooks that you can access digitally if you're a Patreon, because I feel like people enjoy looking at my sketchbook pages and stuff, and I know a lot of people who even will, like, reference my drawings to draw from them, or just to reference my art style, or just to have, and I feel like it would be easier to have a digital file of my sketchbook to look through instead of just scrubbing through the footage from the sketchbook session. Um, and I also might put them up for purchase on Gumroad for like $5 too or something like that so that you can just like have the PDF file or whatever I'm gonna make it file even if you're not a patron. But if you're a patron you can get access to all of them for like whatever your tier is. So that's one of the things that I really want to be one of my rewards too. I've been planning that for like quite a long time now. I've wanted to do it for like probably a year. Um, it's just I don't know if my scanner on my printer can even do that. Like I might have to get a handheld scanner or a scanner that's actually capable of scanning that in before I would make that a reward on Patreon. But um, if that sounds like a cool plan, like I'd want to do a bunch of other stuff too because if someone uh, pledges to me on Patreon, I really want it to be like, all right, you're getting good quality, extra, like exclusive content. It's not like you're just giving me money for no reason, right? Like, I want it to be worth your while if you sub to me, you know? And then I also might do like monthly calls or uh, maybe have like a Patreon exclusive live stream. I've been wanting to live stream for a really long time, and I totally would, except for the fact that my internet just isn't that reliable, and I don't know how it can run a live stream, but, like, that might be one of the things that would help me to get motivated to figure that out and maybe tweak my settings a little bit, um, is if I had interest in doing, like, Patreon live streams, you know? Because I feel like that's basically what sketchbook sessions are, right? Like, it's kind of just an art live stream, but it's not live. It's almost like you're watching it after the fact, you know? Because there's just minimal editing and it's just me sitting here talking. So I would love to just do this live. I feel like it would be really fun to engage with people. <laughs> and then I could, whenever I ask questions, it's not screaming into the void. Like, I'd actually be able to look at chat and see people reply back to me. So, um... You know, let me know if any of those things sound interesting to you um, and worth your while for maybe a Patreon subscription or something like that. Um, but, uh, like, the other thing that I have been wanting to do for forever, <laughs> and it's just, like, 
the obvious long-term goal is to actually be able to post more on a weekly basis or even more frequently than that maybe um, so many video ideas for October I had to go and just basically drop because I didn't have the time like I had people submit pet and costume photos to me on um, Instagram and I was gonna do like a reaction and then maybe draw some of their pets in costumes and I just completely ran out of time. I completely overestimated how much time I would have in October and I should have known because October is always like a really busy month for the fall semester anyways. I had like so many course projects that I had to get done and that's always going to be the priority, right? So I just had to like let go of some of that and maybe if people show interest in it, I could maybe still try to do a pet costume reaction video, even though it's not seasonal anymore. Uh, like, maybe I'll do one next year if I can. I feel bad because I have all this stuff. I filmed the reaction part, even. I have the file still. It's just, like, drawing. I also got so many submissions to where I don't think I would have time to draw all of them. It's, like, 50 pets. I don't know that I would be able to draw... 50 pets in like a week or however long it would take for me to get one of those videos out. You know, I'm pretty fast at drawing animals, but I don't know if I'm quite that fast. So it like, uh, it all depends. You know, let me know if that's still something you would be interested in seeing. I'm sure that uh, the people who submitted their pets to me would definitely be interested in seeing that because I did get a pretty big response from that. Um, so I'm sorry that that's not out yet. Maybe I can do it as an extra, even during the month of December, if, like I said, people are still interested. Because I did get a surprising amount of people who submitted pictures of their pets wearing like Christmas-themed outfits, which was also kind of fun. Um, so maybe I could even bend it and be like, eh, Halloween content, kind of, but it's Christmas, right? It still works. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. I don't know. Um, I feel like so many of my problems right now would be solved if I had an editor, but I, my channel is not big enough for that. And also like, I enjoy the editing process too much and I am too much of a control freak to like let someone else edit my videos. I would be like, why didn't you do this there? Whatever, I would just be so picky about it. Like I have such a big issue letting go of creative control whenever it comes to stuff like that. I'm like, no, I wanna do it myself. Um, and because of that, I don't get videos out on time. Cause I'm obsessive, compulsive whenever it comes to editing. Mmm. We love that for me. Oh man, I kind of, he kind of just looks embarrassed now. He's like, or irritated at someone. Maybe he's irritated at me. Well, I was trying to do a cute smolder and it straight up didn't work. He just looks irritated. I think for the rest of this page, I'm just going to try to fit in like poses where I can. I think there's a bit of an opportunity here. I don't know, I'm just gonna have someone sitting and reading. Maybe we got some foreshortening going on here. Leg. So I've been watching Dune with my brother because it's on HBO Max. I feel like I've mentioned this before and it's a movie, but it's taken me several sessions to watch it in because I just, I like fall asleep at night really easily if I'm just chilling and then I miss gigantic portions of films, right? So um, as we've been watching it, uh, it's kind of funny because he's like an emo boy and his name is Paul and I too have an emo boy named Paul. So I've been mentally just making a bunch of emo jokes about my character Paul and like I've been mentally referring to him as a discount Timothy Chalamet clone. Just whatever and this has absolutely no significance to anyone but me because no one knows about my OC Paul. No one cares. It's just, I just needed to mention it to get out of my system because I'm like, haha, funny. It's, 
See, he, he's emo and his name is Paul. And then there's another emo guy named Paul. What a coincidence. Not me forcing myself to draw men. I've been doing that more lately because I, I just got into this thing where I'm like, oh gosh, I forgot how to draw guys. Whoops, here he is. My gosh, should I draw Timothy Chalamet? Is that what I'm gonna do in a minute here? To, to the people out there who are attracted to people who look like Timothy Chalamet. Do you guys think that Timothy Chalamet is hot? This is a question that's been rolling around my friend group for the last couple of weeks. Like, my friend the other day came up to me and he was like, who's this Timothy Chalamet and why am I supposed to care about him suddenly? And I was like, I don't know, dog. Like, he's just kind of here now. And he was like, what else has he been in? Why do people care? Why is Timothy Chalamet suddenly a big deal? Like, with Zendaya, I get it. But why Timothy Chalamet? I was like, I don't know. And then we, we started discussing the question, is Timothy Chalamet hot? It's almost like, is Hillary Swank hot? You know, from The Office. And like, I'm curious because like, for me, yes and no. I'm like, he's okay, but he also has that particular like, sick baby boy look that I was into in high school that I'm much less into as a 23 year old lady. Um, I'm like, yeah, he's like, okay, but he also, like, he, he, he's fine, but not quite, so, do you, is Timothy Chalamet hot? Is there someone out there in the comments who's just like, oh my god, Timothy Chalamet? Um, cause I get it, the dead boy look is very much a thing now. He's just an e-boy. Like, he's, he's just the modern epitome of e-boy, e so... Like, he's a type, we get it, but I'm also curious. Like, this has been a debate going around. Is Timothy Chalamet hot? Comment below, I'm very interested. Like, I want a fuming debate in the comments talking about is Timothy Chalamet hot? Because I, I need to know what the lads think. Do you guys, I also feel like half of my audience is just lesbians. So lesbians, you can be objective about this maybe. Is Timothy Chalamet hot? Talk to me. I need to know what you think. Um, that's your assignment for today. Please comment below. And Timothy Chalamet, if you're watching this video, I'm very sorry. I don't know what, like if you're here in the late hours of the sketchbook session, you know that we like to get a little insane. We devolve into complete and total insanity and we debate the big questions of life. It, it gets philosophical almost. Oh. Can you tell that after a while, my brain just goes away? My brain leaves my body and I am left with artist brain, which is about the least articulate thing in the world. So, uh, thanks for watching. And thank you for witnessing my descent into madness. It means a lot, it really does. Um, let's see here. How, do, how does one go about drawing a hood? Whenever I draw a hood, I feel like it looks like a misshapen coffee cake that has been stepped on several times. Um, I don't know why that was just the most accurate description that I've ever given of anything, but it was actually quite impressive. This is interesting. I don't know why I just thought of this, but what am I, what am I talking about? This is an art video, that's why I thought about this. Um, leave me your best art tips in the comments. I'm not, I'm not even trying to stimulate the, the algorithm. I'm just kidding, I totally am. But no, I actually genuinely want to know. I feel like I haven't looked at art videos in a while or like even studied. I, once you get to a certain point, I feel like you're just like, yeah, I'm an artist, I kind of know things, but then you, you know nothing. I feel like I know nothing right now. All of my art skills have gone away because I didn't, use them effectively enough for a month, so I'm just like drowning in imperceptible amounts of insanity. What? Just give me, tell me how to fix my art in the comments below. Um, all seriousness, like what are some ways that you guys study whenever you're feeling like your art's kind of lagging and you need to like brush up on technical stuff? Because I have my methods for studying, which is basically just draw photos, watch tutorials, like analyze how other people draw, blah blah blah, whatever. 
but I know that there's got to be some other better ways and like uh, just other ways to go about studying art in general um, this guy looks weird let's zoom in who is he he looks sad I feel like Timothy Chalamet has the most condescending gaze I've ever seen. Oh no. I don't even remember what I was saying a second ago, but I, I think I was talking about giving me tips for how you like to study art, so certainly do that. My camera's about to run out of batteries, so we should probably do this pretty quick. We're gonna draw Timothy Chalamet's condescending gaze real quick. Just the condescending gaze though, not the rest of his face. Mostly because I just want to like fill up this little portion here. It's got those eyes that are like real sunken in. It's those dead eyes. Is that what ladies like these days? Dead eyes? Have you guys noticed how my like um, they're like the lines that go down from your eyes that are like your eye bags? Have you noticed how mine are so long and deep? Why are my eye bags so long and deep? I know I'm sleep deprived, but like I feel like it's kind of extreme, right? this look like him? There it is. Yeah, like this thing here. The part that makes you look tired and dead. I've got it in droves. I've got it for days. Okay. We're gonna draw. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh yeah, I'm, I don't know why I'm ripping on Timothy Chalamet in this sketchbook session. This is so unhinged and like random. But I, so I'm sorry, but I'm also not sorry because these are just my raw emotions coming out. Can we talk about how Timothy Chalamet spells his first name with two E's at the end and how that is the most pretentious thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Like Timothy Chalamet, what are you doing? What are your parents doing? Why do you feel the need to take up an extra vowel in your name? Why? That would be like if at my name, I had like two A's at the end just for like, giggles. Why is this necessary? Why are we doing this as a society? I petitioned to have Timothy Chalamet's name changed to spell Timothy the regular people way. My grandfather's name was Timothy and it was regular, okay? This is what's wrong with our country. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I just think it's really funny because like, again, my friends and I were sitting around discussing Timothy Chalamet the other day. So we we're like, all right, let's stock his IMDb because we got to figure out what else he's done. What else warrants uh, his his right as a the e boy, the e boy with two e's at the end of the, because his name is Timothy Chalamet. Okay, right. So we were stalking his uh, IMDb. My friend looked up his name and totally spelled it wrong, like as wrong as you can possibly get. Um, relatable content. I can't spell worth a crap. But I, can you also blame anyone whenever Timothy Chalamet spells his name with two E's? What is that? Who is he? Who is this man? Where did he come from? He's probably one of the lizard people. I, I've just discovered that Timothy Chalamet is a, like a paradox, basically. At least to my brain, like I can't, my brain doesn't make sense of him. I can't figure him out. What is he? Well, I was looking in the mirror the other day and I was like, okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna put on some eyebrows because my eyebrows are non-existent. And I did my eyebrows real thick and juicy like, and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, why do I kind of look like Timothy Chalamet right now? And, I, and then I looked at myself again, I'm like, no, I don't look like Timothy Chalamet. But then I was like, maybe I do? Comment below, do I look like Timothy Chalamet? I know I don't, but I also do. What is this? He looks crazed. Can we talk about how I don't know how to draw eyes all of a sudden? Well, it's not that sudden, really, when you think about it. I'm sorry, Timothy. My camera died. Um, we're at that stage in the sketchbook session where I'm no longer contributing anything coherent or of value. So I think I'm gonna just finish this up real quick and then I'll show you the, the final spread. Let's do it. The spread is done. I'm pretty happy 
happy with how all the sketches came out, you know, like, it's not perfect, everything's like a little wonky and off still just because I'm trying to brush up and like get the art juices flowing again and kind of get my knowledge of anatomy and proportion back to where it was before I kind of like bailed on it for like a month. But uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I think I got some good practice in. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Um, if you want to like and comment and subscribe and turn on notifications, you know, all the things that help the channel out, I encourage you to do so. And I'm very, very thankful to everyone who does, like I said, helps me out. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time, hopefully with some more art-related content next week. Thank you all once again for watching, but for now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. I have to go and consume an entire rotisserie chicken by myself. Bye!